Welcome back everyone to another installment of Space This Week. And oh boy, is this a big one. We had some absolute record breakers this week. The biggest ever Starship static fire in Boca Chica. The launch of the world's biggest and most powerful operational rocket. Lots of launch activity from China, a lunar lander, and much, much more. This video was sponsored by Squarespace, the world's premier website builder. More on them a little bit later on, but first, let's discuss Starship news. Last week's activities at Starbase Texas kicked off with a bang, literally. On Monday, Super Heavy Booster 7 began propellant loading, and then, a little later on, we saw activation of the FireX fire suppression system. In no time at all, we were then treated to Raptor engine ignition. This static fire was the biggest ever conducted by SpaceX's Starship, and the force of the blast ended up knocking Lab Padre's camera off temporarily. Luckily, the angle recovered, and as the fog cleared, we saw the booster fade back into view after successfully static firing a whopping 14 Raptor 2 engines, which is double the previous record of 7. This is all in service of ramping up to that elusive Booster 7 33 engine static fire event, a test that, according to NASA, is required for SpaceX to do before the first orbital launch attempt can happen. What happens next is really up to speculation. SpaceX may continue to gradually up the number of engines, the next one may increase by 7 engines again to 21, or some other incremental increase, or we may just see the next static fire feature all 33 engines. What do you reckon? Me? I think it's more likely that we'll see the number of engines used in a single static fire gradually increase until we hit 33, rather than SpaceX going straight from 14 to 33. We did have a tweet from Elon saying that the next static fire we'll see will involve roughly 20 second burn duration with maximum oxygen fill to test the ship's autogenous pressurization systems, followed by possibly one more static fire and then the first orbital launch attempt. However, we know that Elon's tweets aren't always the most reliable, and I hear he's a bit wrapped up in the whole Twitter thing at the moment. <laughs> Starship Gazer caught some views of the orbital launch mount following the static fire, and superficially, it appears to have held up pretty well. Nothing seems broken or anything, a little scorched perhaps, but I guess that's to be expected. Structurally, everything looks to have held up well. Meanwhile, over at suborbital pad B, Ship 24 is undergoing... something. <laughs> a load of scaffolding has been springing up around the base of the vehicle, and we're not really sure why. It's definitely not to facilitate the loading of any Starlink satellites or anything, since even though we did recently see a new delivery of Starlink V2 satellites at Starbase, Ship 24's payload bay door is welded shut, so it can't carry anything inside. There's also no platforms on the scaffolding either, so this doesn't appear to be here to allow workers to access the ship more easily. The three leading theories are that SpaceX are planning on hanging some sort of privacy shield on the structure to obscure the ship while it's worked on, or this is the beginnings of some temporary blast support to protect Ship 24 during the Booster 7 33 engine static fire test. What are your thoughts on this? I'd love to hear in the comment section down below. And hey, if you are enjoying the video so far, then don't forget to leave a little like down below to help support the content and consider subscribing to get these videos in your feeds every single Monday to keep you in the loop about all things spaceflight. But yeah, super interesting this metal work around Ship 24, but exciting to watch it develop. Almost as exciting as the fact that this video was sponsored by Squarespace! Squarespace makes web development simple, which is great, since having a website these days is so important. If you're a business owner, musician, graphic designer, old-timey plague doctor of dubious medical qualifications, or anyone else trying to carve their way in the modern world, then you need a website. Just head over to Squarespace and make a free account, no credit card details required, select from an extensive list of professionally designed templates, and then get creating. Customize every aspect of your site to make it perfectly tailored to your needs. Check out that footage on screen. Despite this user being from the Middle Ages, they have no trouble at all building a slick website for their old-timey plague doctor of dubious medical qualification surgery thanks to Squarespace's super user-friendly and intuitive interface. And again, building a website is completely free. It's only when it's time to launch that any payment is required, and when that time comes, head on over to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Link is at the top of this video's description. Go on, follow that link and elevate your online presence today. Starship development moving at a rapid pace as always then. In fact, the three-year anniversary of this photo taken by Starbase Surfer took place last week. 
Yep, three years ago, Starbase was little more than a tent and this rather janky prototype vehicle. And look at things now, buildings are still getting built, the tent behind the high bay being the latest addition. It's coming along really, really well. Almost all the insulation has been installed now. Now, we're not quite sure what this tent will be used for, but my guess is that it's to act as a temporary replacement for each of the three existing tents, as they're each demolished in sequence to allow for expansion of the Star Factory building. It's hard to believe that the record-smashing Booster 7 14-engine static fire event could be overshadowed this week, but it, of course, was. Yep, that's right, this is the big one. The big launch that you've all been waiting for on the 16th of November 2022, we finally saw the launch of the Ceres-1 from the Qiquan Satellite Launch Site in China. This rocket carried five Jilin-1 Geofen 03D satellites, wow that's a mouthful of a name, <laughs> and according to official sources, the solid propellant fueled Ceres-1 successfully placed the satellites into their planned orbits where they will provide commercial remote sensing services. The Ceres-1 launch really was truly one of the launches that took place on the 16th of November. There was one other launch on the 16th. This was a little one that you might be aware of. It was only the maiden flight of NASA's space launch system, the Artemis 1 mission, which nearly six years after its original launch date, finally soared into the skies, carrying the Orion spacecraft to the moon. It was a shame that, after waiting so long, when the launch finally came, it was at night, so you can't really see the rocket that well, but I did very much enjoy these close-ups of ignition on the pad. You can see the hydrogen burn-offs igniting, followed by the water deluge, and then the big event itself. First of all, the main engines, and then ignition of the SRBs. You can see the rocket illuminated by the glow of its engine exhaust as it cleared the pad at breakneck speed. Although the launch visually could have been better, what was really great was the sound. The audio on NASA's live stream felt visceral. You can really feel the thunder of those four RS-25 engines and the two gigantic solid rocket motors through your speakers. traveling 607 miles per hour. I can only imagine how things felt down at the Kennedy Space Center. The excitement even got the best of the announcer as he declared booster ignition. <laughs> Two, one, boosters ignition and liftoff of Artemis 1. Everyday astronaut was at the scene and this view here showing their reactions really does a great job showing how the rocket's flames completely lit up the night sky. Great work as always there, Tim. <laughs> Here you can see Orion separating from the interim cryogenic propulsion stage, a stage which was also carrying a few rideshare payloads. There were 10 CubeSats contained in this stage, which were released after the translunar injection burn. These CubeSats will serve a variety of functions, but I think the most interesting one is the Omo Tenashi CubeSat, built by JAXA. This is a lunar lander designed to demonstrate low-cost technology to land and explore the lunar surface, and it'll take measurements of the radiation environments both near the moon and from its surface. So there we have it. Popular media has you misled. The Artemis 1 mission is a moon landing mission, technically. <laughs> the next big milestone for the Artemis 1 flight will be today, the 21st of November, which is when the Orion will get close to the moon. We should get some excellent views of it on NASA TV. It'll perform an orbital insertion burn and will enter its final orbit around the moon on the 25th of November. It'll remain in lunar orbit for approximately six days. Good luck to the Artemis team on this next major step for the Artemis 1 mission. Going back to China now, on the 15th of November, we saw the launch of another trusty Long March 4C, which launched from the Qiquan Satellite Launch Center, carrying the Yaogan 3403. The Yaogan satellites are widely understood to be primarily used by the Chinese military, but official sources maintain that they are used for resources surveys, urban planning, crop yield estimation, and disaster prevention. I often get asked what all this stuff falling off the Long March rockets is. That's the thermal protection shielding. It's used on Long March rockets launched from the Taiwan and Qiquan launch sites during the colder winter months, and it helps keep the payload at a controlled temperature. It was another busy week for Laon Aerospace last week. The Blunderbirds were deployed to the Mun's mountainous poles to rescue two stranded Kerbinauts with a totally safe and practical rocket-powered dune truck. <laughs> if that mission sounds like a good time, then be sure to click that card on screen. And hey, if you want to help support what I do here, like the kind name scrolling on screen, 
then consider joining my Patreon or channel membership programs. I have to pay royalties to use a lot of the photos and videos used in space this week, and it's your generosity that allows me to keep making this content for you all. But otherwise, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.